Hi, I'm Dr Edwards. I'm one of the consultants here on the ward. So what's going on with my dad? Can I just check who you are and who your dad is? Please? I'm Paul Foxton. My dad is George Foxton. Okay. Tell me what you're worried about. What, well, what, the, what I'm saying? worried about is that apparently he doesn't want to have be resuscitated. He doesn't want his antibiotics. How can that be? Why would anyone not want to have this medication? Why would anyone not want to be revived if they're dying? Mm. Okay. Okay. Has your dad spoken to you about his wishes for his health and his... No, care? I've come in today. I've come in today and I've been told by a nurse that he's signed some sort of death form. Okay. Okay. Some form that where he's going to be allowed to die or at worst kill him. Okay. I think the form you might mean is a resuscitation form. Is well, whatever it is, it's saying that he doesn't want it. Okay. Now, why would anyone not want to be back to life again if they're dying? Okay. Surely that's your job as a doctor. Um, do you understand around what is the matter with your dad, what, what his underlying health problems are? Well, he's got pneumonia, and that's where he has the antibiotics, yeah. right? He's got that, and what you're saying is that you've allowed him to say, I don't want it. And do you understand that he has um, cancer of the prostate as well? Oh, yes, I know exactly what's wrong with him. He's been in and out of hospital for these past few weeks. I know all of that. He's deteriorating. But that is no, there's no reason why you should kill him just because he's old and he's dying. So we're not killing him. We're not allowed to kill him. That's against the law. Um, what he signed and what he's agreed to with conversation with us is that he does not want to be resuscitated. Yeah, and why would anyone want to do that? So resuscitation is the point at which somebody's heart stops. And um, at that point, if we resuscitate someone, we would try and cardiac massage and breathing. You may have seen it on the television. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And they get those paddles on them and they get them going again. To restart their heart. Unfortunately, it's not like it is on the TV and it doesn't normally work. But those are the things that are done during resuscitation. Now, sadly, your dad has a condition um, which is not curable. He has a, a cancer which has spread outside of the prostate gland. And as you say, he has been deteriorating in the last six months and sadly, I don't have a cure for his prostate Yeah, but that cancer. is no reason for not trying to keep him alive as long as possible. Mm -hmm. That's what we all want for him. Mm -hmm. So the things, I think the things he wants and he's able to make those decisions is that he wants the comfort and dignity that he's entitled to. He feels he's been in and out of hospital a lot and doesn't really want to be in the hospital having drips and antibiotics. He wants to be with his family. And he feels that at that point when his heart does stop, he doesn't want to have someone restart it because he doesn't think it's all, going to work. It's, it all sounds very convincing, but someone's put this idea into his head. Yeah. So when someone took this form to him, did they actually just lead him on to no. make him sign it the way he signed it? No. Normally we have conversations about someone's health and the, their preferences around their health as a whole conversation. So the conversation that you and I, that he and I had, and indeed you, he and I can have together if you would prefer, would be that what does he think about his health now? He's not happy with it. Where does he see his health going in the near future? He realises he's going to get worse. What are his preferences for that care? Yeah, but you he can't just leave home. him to die. You can't leave him to die. I don't want him just to die. Right. So if he is having his heart stopped or he's having a heart attack or whatever, why yes. wouldn't you put, why wouldn't you do something about I'm, that? I'm going to stop you there. So a heart stop emergency is different from a heart attack. If he has a heart attack, of course, we're going to use normal treatments for a heart attack if he agrees and he's got the capacity to do that. Yeah. So that's different from a heart stop, at which point he says he would like, he would like natural, he would allow natural death to occur. Yeah. I, I'm a doctor. I can do so much. I can do lots of things for him. I can support his pain. 
I can treat infection if he wants us to in the future. I can make sure he's not distressed, but I can't reverse the underlying cause, which is that he has an incurable cancer. And that's hard to hear, I know. I know you're upset. Mm. He's my dad. I know. All right, he's 94, all right, he's ill. Mm. Mm. You're close to your dad. Mm. I just thought, I don't want you just to let him die. No. Because he's going to be in pain, he's going to be fearful. Is that what you're worried about, that he'll be in pain? Yeah, yeah. I think he's going to be in pain. Yeah. I've got lots of things I can do for pain. I've got lots of things I can do if he gets distressed. Yeah. I think he wants to spend time with you, though. Yeah, we talked about him coming home. I'm mm -hmm. saying, Dad, I don't think you can at the moment because we haven't got all the facilities at home. We can get facilities home. We can get your hospital bed at home. We can get analgesia at home. We can get pumps at home. We can get nurses at home. Mm. We can respect what he wants. Mm. Mm. And at 94, I think he's entitled to that. So what are you going to give him to make sure that he's... So why don't you and he and I have a chat together? Yeah. Yeah? And then you can perhaps hear, because maybe he hasn't had this conversation with you because he finds it too painful, but maybe with me there as well, I can facilitate you having a, an honest conversation about what he wants. Yeah. And then we can make a plan together. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. So let's just summarise what we've talked about. I know that you've been upset about the do not resuscitate order and we've talked about that that means at the point of heart stop and that is your dad's decision as someone with capacity. We've talked a little bit about him not wanting antibiotics and we can have that conversation with him and, him and you and I together. We've stopped them for the moment. He doesn't want them. There's nothing, there's nothing set in stone, so we could restart if, if we decided differently. We could get the palliative care team involved and they are a team that particularly support with symptom control. So I know that you were worried about pain and distress and, and they would be a good team to help us with that. Um, are there any other things you, we haven't covered, do you think? Uh, no, that? I don't think so, no. Okay. Um, is there anyone who can, who's supporting you at home with kind of managing with all of this? Yes, There's yes, my wife's, my wife's at home. Okay, yeah. so she's welcome to come in as well if, if you wanted some, some extra support. And then should we agree to meet with your dad and whoever in the next day or so so we can kind of have carry on this conversation? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, okay. Thank you.